There are times in our lives when we need to have a very difficult conversation. This was such a time for Mary. Mary was engaged to a man called Joseph. We need to pause here to try to understand a little of what that meant to Joseph and to Mary. Firstly, the parents of Joseph and Mary had agreed to their being married. They may even have arranged it. Then the families would have made a public announcement of this arrangement. <clears throat> Once the public announcement had been made, the arrangement could only be broken through the death of Joseph or Mary or both, or through divorce. And until their marriage, the couple could not engage in what Matthew terms marital relations. Consequently, Mary's being pregnant before the marriage presented Mary and Joseph with a huge problem. Whether or not Joseph was the father, Mary's being pregnant would bring great shame upon the families and it would have left them, more accurately, it would have left the parents and Joseph with only a limited number of choices. The families could ignore the question of who the father was and opt for a very quick marriage so it would appear that the baby was conceived after they had been married. Or, Joseph, whether he accepted his being the father or not, could divorce Mary for some other made-up reason. This would leave Mary, as a single unmarried mother, in a very precarious position. Very, very unlikely ever to marry and totally dependent upon her parents for her future security and that of the baby. A baby which they would, most likely, have tried to pass off as that of another married relative. Worst of all possible scenarios, Joseph could deny his being the father and divorce Mary on the grounds of adultery. In this case, there was a possibility of Mary's being stoned to death. Mary was confronted with a very, very difficult conversation. Her future, indeed her very life and that of the baby, would, not, would then be not in her hands, but in the hands of Joseph and his family. To her credit, Mary had that very, very difficult conversation. She told Joseph that she was pregnant. Her future and that of the baby now rested on the decision that Joseph would make. Joseph opted for a quiet divorce, most likely on some made-up grounds, leaving him free to marry another woman and leaving Mary, yes, free from a possible stoning, but leaving Mary, her baby and her family with some very, very difficult decisions to make. Matthew's story describes Joseph as a righteous man who did not want to expose Mary to public disgrace. I'll leave you to decide whether or not, given the limited choices available, Joseph made the best decision for all concerned. But Matthew's story does not end there. Having made his decision, a decision which would have a huge impact for Mary, the baby, and Mary's family, whilst leaving Joseph free to marry, having made his decision, Joseph laid his, his we hope, troubled head down and sought the comfort of sleep. That sleep brought a dream. A dream in which Joseph was challenged by an angel, a messenger from God, whose form we are not told. Joseph is challenged to rethink his decision and instead to marry Mary 
and to even name their child Jesus. Joseph was challenged to change his mind, to make the choice that he had already rejected, to marry Mary, and to accept that this baby was conceived by God's will, from the Holy Spirit, to use Matthew's phrase. The Joseph of this world had made a very worldly wise decision. A decision that was certainly the best for him. A quick and quiet divorce, accepting no responsibility for the baby, whether or not he was the father, distancing himself from Mary and her family, leaving them to sort out the repercussions of Mary's being pregnant and freeing himself to marry another. That was Joseph's worldly wise initial decision. But God had another solution. Not the easiest of solutions, not a solution that the world would necessarily consider the best, not Joseph's way, God's way. We are often faced with difficult decisions. And we usually opt for decisions that make sound sense to our worldly way of thinking. A person strikes you on the cheek. The world says to strike back, to meet violence with violence. God says to offer the other cheek, to meet violence with peace. A person steals your coat. The world says to get it back and to punish the thief, to keep what is yours, and to pass judgment. God says to offer another coat, to seek to understand and to show compassion. A person asks for a favor. The world says to give that favor, but no more. God says to give that favor and a little more. Be generous. The world says to hold on to hurts, to keep a record of wrongs. God says, forgive. Joseph's story shows us a man who is open to receive God's message and to prepared to follow the way of God, even if that way was not the way that he would have chosen. It's a challenge to us, to us all, when faced with what can be very difficult decisions. A challenge to pause, to stop pursuing our worldly ways, and to take time to hear the angels, the messengers of God, telling us not about our ways, but about God's ways. And then having the courage to follow God's ways, no matter what we we may consider to be the cost. As individuals and as a church, we often face difficult decisions. Do we spend our money on this project or not? Do, Do we go a little further in offering friendship to this person or not? Do we give God a little more time and a little more space in our busy lives or not? Can we be more like Joseph, open to hearing and acting God's word for our lives and for this God's church? So that we, like Joseph, Mary, and their child, may thrive. Amen.